my name is Leslie Williams, and today's date is June 21st, 2012. And I'm going to show you that I'm booting up my cell phone right now. Okay, shows you what today's date is, June 21st, Thursday, 4.17 p.m. And I'm making this video file because I want fellow San Diegoans and fellow Americans to know the truth about what's been happening to me openly now for 10 full years every single day. Now, I gotta, I'm gonna, this is going to be what is known as a tidbit file, and tidbit files have certain sections of pertinent information, and this one particular uh, tidbit file is going to hold some predictions concerning uh, relevant information. Now, there's an old saying, know your enemy, okay? Sun Tzu, he was a Chinese warrior. He was a military strategist, and he developed uh, strategies in order to uh, be able to place his um, soldiers in battle in order to win. And there's also the Zulu Nation also has effective military strategies in order to be able to effectively uh, engage in military campaigns against the enemy. Now, since I have been a target of this crime now openly for 10 full years every single day, and since I discovered seven years into the campaign what gang stalking was in 2009, as a result, in, in reference to that being what was happening to me was gang stalking, I didn't discover it until June 9, 2009. Uh, nine is what I'm trying to say. I'm learning disabled, so bear with me. But as a result of, the, uh, of synthesizing the experience with the educated knowledge that, that I discovered online after discovering what, what was happening to me was gang stalking, which is also called organized stalking, and as a result of finding out their methods, tactics, who they're connected to, and what they're all about and how they operate, I've discovered, I pretty much have, have uh, been able to become extremely familiar with my enemy in reference to their methods, their tactics, and their thinking and their reactionary responses. I've also come to discover what their limitations are, what their fears are, who they're connected to, and the lengths they'll go to to keep a whistleblower like me from disclosing to the public what's happened to me, who they are, what they've done to me and hundreds of thousands of other Americans and literally millions worldwide as a result of organized gang stalking, remote neural monitoring, remote neural influencing, remote neural stimulating, even cognitive neural implants, yes, and electronic harassment. Now, I just arrived back here in San Diego on August 8th, 2011, one day late in reference to the actual Greyhound ticket that I bought. I was scheduled to arrive here on August 7th. We arrived one day late due to layover terminal delays on Route 2 here from Connecticut. I came from Connecticut to here, and I came from Michigan to Connecticut. I was in Connecticut a couple months, then came here. I came here for the first time on August 8, 2011, for the first time since 2006. And when I was out here in 2006, I was only out here between 34 and 37 days, and I was subject to organized gang stalking tactics, tactics, electronic harassment, and remote neural monitoring during those 37 days when I was out here, and did not have a name for it. I have literally been tortured every single day and night for 10 full years openly now. And it's happened in four different states. If you go to Google and type in a gang stalking tech, everything you need to know, it's a manifesto of a gang stalker. Actually, what he is is a manager and director of gang stalking, organized stalking, harassment that a target experiences along their routes. He typed this manifesto offline and then went to an internet cafe and posted it online. And it spread like wildfire. You'll flat out, as a result of being able to meticulously look at this manifesto, you can clearly see they're connected to the police, lawyers, judges, psychiatrists, doctors, uh, uh, you name it, firefighters. It's nothing but organized crime within the system. And as a result of the paper trail proof that I have, the video files I have, the, audible, aud uh, the audio uh, files that I have, the email files that I have, notaries that I have, and how I have written extensive timeline sections in reference to everything that's happened. Some is posted online and some are just saved in email files. I have over 60 email accounts, well over 3 million email files, okay, probably, um, and um, <coughs> uh, at least 10 USB drives, over 50 video memory cards. I have undisputable, undeniable, physical, tangible proof that all literally synthesizes and works together that literally flat out shows that I have been tortured for 10 full years. Now, since I've been out here since August 8, 2011, I have not went to social services once. I have not been in the hospital except for two occasions when I went on each occasion after I was assaulted once on August 17, 2011, 
and one separate assault that occurred on an MTS bus after it was predicted in an email file on October 10th, 2011 on an MTS bus. Then MTS sent me an altered video. You can just you can view that video of me being assaulted and the and the printout the, the the printed out and scanned email file that I made in reference to how I was predicting there was a great likelihood I'd be assaulted as a result of me reaching out to Barbara Boxer, a senator in California. I I printed out that email and uh, I uh, uh, scanned it and I uploaded it into a blog I made and then pasted the URL blog address into the comments feature of that YouTube video that can be found by typing in learning disabled woman brutally assaulted on MTS bus and there's also another YouTube video that you can uh, scrutinize by typing in at YouTube learning disabled woman, woman catches gang stalker admitting put on bus to harass now the reason why I'm making this particular video file is this in the next week and a half, two weeks, I'm going to be going down and filing for a California license, and then I'm going to be going down to social services to apply for food stamps, which has been my right ever since I've been here. When I first came down here, I uh, rented a P.O. box, and, uh, I, then I, and then I went to Social Security to give them my new P post office box because I was scheduled to be up for a review in August of 2011 through Social Security. So I had to make sure I got down here in time to get a P.O. box, get that established, and then notify Social Security of my new P.O. box number so they could send the review papers in to me for that. As a result, Social Security turned around and notified Social Services that I have, uh, I, that I have opened up an address box here. And as a result, the Michigan food stamps were cut off, okay? And which literally shows that I have literally been here in San Diego since August 2011 but I have not went down to social services to sign up so social services can pick up for my Medicare premium cost and for food stamps because I've been afraid to and why have I been afraid well it's real simple go to Google and type in organized stalking and or gang stalking or organized gang stalking and social services and look at how many Google generated responses you will receive to that description you can also go to Google and type in organized stalking or gang stalking or organized gang stalking in Social Security and look at how many Google generated responses you will you will you will get from Google as a result of you typing in that term. My name is Leslie Williams and it clearly states in the manifesto what they try to do is trap targets through court proceedings. Okay? And this is done by trying to claim the target cannot take care of themselves. Yeah, by calling them delusional, paranoid schizophrenic, schizophrenic schizoaffective, bipolar, anything that they can label a target through their corrupted psychiatrists they're connected to, their, their corrupted doctors they're connected to, their corrupted fire department EMS, their corrupted and syndicated organized crime members of the police department, San Diego for sure, California Highway for, for sure as well, and I'm suspecting, I'm highly suspecting also as well, the sheriff's department. <clears throat> and I have reason to say these things, flat out. Now, I have not had one dealing with them so far, and I have not been down to county mental health. I have not been subjected to them either as well since I've been down here since August 8, 2011. But understand this and be clear. I have undisputable, undeniable proof that I was describing in email files in 2006 when I was out here that I was being gang stalked. What I was mentioning was descriptions of what was happening to me in these email files. Now. These descriptions clearly describe what is known as gang stalking tactics that you can find online. Also, the San Diego police played a direct physical role, a direct physical role in not only the gang stalking, but a direct physical role in a, what is known as street theaters and gang stalking circles. And what they are is nothing but staged productions, events, that they bring about towards a target to achieve an end result. They frame the situation by creating one okay in order to be able to achieve an end result they approached me at a campsite and literally told me I could not stay there and then tried to influence my my thinking to go back to Michigan by transmitting something over their police dispatch that the stalkers were gone even though I had no dealings directly at all with the San Diego police whatsoever about my situation in 2006 whatsoever on any date when I was out here in 2006 yes and since they knew they were directly involved in that street theater, which coerced me and, and, and literally colluded me into going back to Michigan where I was tortured for four straight years and sexually exploited, even by fire department personnel and police officers in Michigan. As a direct result, I had to fly, flee from there and go to Connecticut and then came from Connecticut back to here. 
Now that I have undisputable, undeniable, physical, tangible, literal proof that it's undisputable that I'm gang stalked here now, they had to know I arrived in order to initiate the gang stalking towards me again here since I've been here since August 11, 2011, up to this date, June 21st, 2012. And since they're directly attached to what they did in 2006, and since I got email files proving that I was gang stalked out here in 2006, and then I come out here again in a totally separate four and a half year time period span disconnection between two separate years. 2006, I locked, went back to Michigan, stayed there until 2011, went to Connecticut. Then from Connecticut, came back out here again. I haven't been to San Diego since before August 8, 2011, since 2006. So how did they know I came back? Because they were notified I came back by the syndicate from Connecticut that stalked, that was notified from Michigan. And if you read the manifesto, you can clearly see that it was that that it is stated they are a nationwide syndicate. So what the San Diego police are going to do in an organized crime that is infested within the system that they're connected to is going to use their power positions to try and box me in through either an organized gang stalking street theater, which is an incident they bring about towards me along my path to get me provoked, to try and get me to act out violently, yes, by, by people they get to harass me along my routes, yeah, on trolleys, buses, trolley stations, bus routes, university campuses, walking, businesses, sitting down having a cigarette anywhere I go, because that's what organized stalking is all about. Go to, go, go to YouTube and type in gang stalking bullying on steroids. It was covered by the Chula Vista Police on a news broadcast just here in last February 11th and March of 2011 by an individual who's subjected to it in Chula Vista. And he flat out says he's stalked and harassed everywhere he goes. And this is what they're going to do. They're going to try and literally label me as being either a threat to myself or others. Because this is literally the type of templates and schemes that they literally use towards a target. And then they bring about incidences and events towards a target that are extremely provocative and insightful to provoke a target to act out. And then, and since these are staged theaters, they even stage the witnesses. They have the witness either take a video picture of the incident. Yeah. And then, and then one of them will call the police, just acting like they're a bystander. The police are calm because it's a scheduled incident. The police comes, hears the bullshit story, shows the video, or, or hears a bullshit a report, and then the police officer literally, literally, literally petitions the target into county mental health in the hospital, where they're deliberately diagnosed, and, and, and they're diagnosed with a disorder in a way to where they try to petition the court to take custody of the target, which was the original motivation behind the expedition to begin with. And this is done to take over the target's social security, to exploit their Medicare, and to exploit the target sexually in a syndicated run group home. They target single mothers, single women, people on disability, the elderly. They're into trust fund liquidation, property co-opting, land co-opting, uh, identity theft, human trafficking, sexual servitude rings and prostitution rings, drug dealing, and so much more. I do not do drugs. I do not drink. I do not sleep around. And I do not steal. <laughs> And this is what's happening towards me along my routes in reference to these expeditions and why it's happening to me. Now, to know your enemy and to know your, the way your enemy thinks is a good asset because then you can deduce what might be their next move. And that's why I make these prediction files because they know they're being exposed online. They know there's undisputable proof online that I'm being gang stalked here again in San Diego. And they know about these sick 2006 emails that I have saved showing me describing I was out here and where I was being gang stalked at, and even by who? Point Loma Library staff, Point Loma Library security staff. I was talking about how San Diego police were circling me, but not approaching me. Yeah, and I was talking about other things that were happening to me over at Point Loma Library, which is a city government owned building and city employees. So do you honestly think that they want this to be able to be proven to public scrutiny that I have been tortured at least from 2006 up until this very date, June 21st, 2012, and that they're involved in it. Hell no. Barney Olson has already threatened me by calling me possibly delusional as a result of me proving to him that the MTS video that they sent me of me being assaulted is altered. And when he seen I started overtaking the situation, he came and called me delusional because this is how they operate. Read the manifesto and make sure you look at the YouTube videos and the comments featured this one. And I am predicting this on today's date that this is what they'll eventually try to do through social services, through a stage street theater, or a stage street theater at social services. Yeah. My name is Leslie Williams. I'm in San Diego, California.